This week on TGC News, a super expensive 50 BMG, a super expensive lightweight bolt gun, and Palmetto State Armory is buying Remington? IWI takes Battle Proven and combines it with innovation with guns like the Tavor X95, the 7.62 chambered Tavor 7, and how about a bullpup semi-auto 12 gauge called the TS-12? If you like classics, how about a Galil Ace? Or the freshly updated Jericho Enhanced? And of course, the Optic Ready Masada. No matter what you're looking for, IWI makes something that fits your needs. To learn more, go to IWI.us. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Let's jump right into it. First up this week, we're going to start off with one of the most expensive guns that we've ever covered. I'll start by saying this. Sometimes there are guns that just check all of the boxes, <laughs> whether or not that's realistic or not. <laughs> You'll see. They are simultaneously exciting, terrifying, great for hunting, great for self-defense, and also complete shenanigans. Say hello to the GM6 Lynx. It is a semi-auto 50 BMG bullpup that claims to have sub-MOA accuracy, which is unlike any other semi-auto BMG I've seen. It also has a barrel that reciprocates about six miles back and forth while cycling. It is completely just visceral to say the least. Now, if your first reaction is, John, this gun isn't new, you'd be right. However, up until recently, it was next to impossible to get one of these in the United States. Because they are made in Hungary, and the US government is a bag of douche about sporting purposes for importing guns, this was not able to be imported, at least until now. There's a company called Hurricane Butterfly out of Washington State that is importing these for the I could buy 25 Glocks for that price of $14,750. It is really expensive. However, to me, this gun is on another level. It's just in a different playing field. If all of the claims hold true, it could be fantastic. It's super unlikely that we will ever get the chance to find out. But it would be amazing if we could. Also, because you guys will enjoy this, spare mags for the Lynx are listed for sale at 450 bucks a piece. <laughs> 450 bucks for a mag. And replacement barrels are $1,750. I want to know what you guys think of guns like this. Do you dream of actually owning one, or is it just fun to drool over? Would you rather have one of these over the Barrett M107A1? Sound off in the comments, and let's talk about it. Next up this week, another expensive but really cool gun. It's from a company called Gunworks, and the basic concept is that it is very lightweight and packs a big punch while managing sound and recoil very well. Kind of checking a lot of boxes again. It's called the Lightsaber, and it's put together by the Skunk Works division of Gunworks as a very limited run. I'll run through the specs for you guys real quick. Starting with the chassis, it's made by XLR Industries and it's made out of magnesium. According to XLR's website, the chassis itself without the grip or stock weighs in at 16 ounces. Combine that with the carbon fiber folding stock and the printed titanium grip and the base of this gun is, like they say, really, really light. The action is one of Gunworks' own, of course, and it's been partnered up with an integrally suppressed barrel from our friends over at Suppressed Weapon Systems. You guys should check them out. The rifling is 14 inches with an extra 8 inches of suppressor built in and a titanium tube over the top of all of that. On top of the rifle is a Schmittenbender 1.5 to 8 by 26 optic, and the gun is chambered for some reason, in an obscure late 2000s cartridge called 338 RCM. RCM stands for Ruger Compact Magnum, and it was developed by Hornady and Ruger, of course. The 338 RCM slings a 225 grain bullet downrange at about 2,750 feet per second out of a 24 inch barrel. Either way, it's a neat rifle overall, and I now have to crush your dreams. Not only is it a super limited run, 
but <laughs> the price tag is 12,800 bucks. Yes, I know that's a lot of money. I'm well aware of that. A certified buttload, in fact. But the rifle is very cool. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. How about some industry news? First up, a couple lawsuit updates. New Frontier Armory was sued by the state of New Jersey over standard capacity magazines being sold to undercover agents. Seems like entrapment to me, but I'm no lawyer. As settlement for this case, New Frontier has agreed to stop selling standard cap mags to New Jersey, and they had to pay a fine of $50,000, or as I like to call it, extortion over constitutional rights. Also in lawsuit news, Glock has won a six-year-long suit against airsoft retailer airsplat.com. Long story short, Glock sued for patent infringement, trade dress, and trademark issues. The court found in favor of Glock. The damage, the court awarded over $2.2 million to Glock and lawyer fees and blah, 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 restitution, da, 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 blah, 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 legal jargon. To me, although Glock has sort of been the Goliath in this case, they were right. I would be pretty upset if a bunch of airsoft companies were ripping off my guns and making tons of money off them. And next, we have some what I consider very, very big news for the gun industry. It's no secret that Remington is a shell of its former self and that in large part, the company is crumbling. Well, it seems that they have an offer on the table to buy the ammunition portion of their business. The offer is for $65 million. Being that they are bankrupt, that's not a bad offer. But the more important part is who made that offer. The company is called JJE Capital Holdings, and their portfolio of brands is some you'll definitely know. Of course, some machining and forging companies, because these guys know guns. Then we see Lead Star Arms, and perhaps more importantly, PSA Defense, and Palmetto State Armory. Yes, that's right. Essentially, the folks that own PSA are trying to buy Remington's ammo manufacturing. That, my friends, is a big deal. They are moving farther out of being just a retailer and becoming more of a juggernaut that covers all aspects of the gun industry. I suppose we shall see how that shakes out, but to me, it's a very interesting move, not one I would have seen coming. I wanna know what you guys think. Is PSA buying up Remington's ammo manufacturing going to matter? Are they gonna come out with like really cheap stuff or is it gonna be a premium brand? What do you think they're gonna do with it? How do you think this will play out? Let's talk about it in the comments. You know the drill. Kinetic Development Group has been leading the charge on innovation for a long time and they are a one-stop shop for everything related to the FN SCAR. Whether you need a scarging handle, an MREX rail, or maybe a sweet quick detach optic mount. KDG has all of that and more. And if you use the code TGC10 over at kineticdg.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order. It's time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from our loyal Subscribestar supporters. Hit the link below to learn how you can support us directly. First up, 22 Cheapster says, what were your goals when you started TGC? I wanted to make something that mattered and that people trusted for all things gun. I think we've done a pretty good job getting there so far. There's certainly still room for growth and evolution, but the core was to make an impact. Austin Fink says, when could we see the ammo panic buying die down? This is probably the most common question I'm getting asked right now. I'm betting it won't be until early spring of next year that we see this slow down or even end. The election season is going to be silly, and if we see a Democrat win, yes, that's still possible, it could stack on another year or even two to my estimate. And Paul Allen says, who would be your pick for replacing Ruth Bader Ginsburg? For those that are unaware, she was a Supreme Court Justice of the United States that recently passed away. To be honest, I would pick someone that I consider to be one of the best pro-freedom attorneys in the U.S., Joshua Prince. My friendly fire question to you guys. If the ammo panic doesn't die down soon, how will that affect you personally? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to Subscribe Star and support us on there. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, I would love it if you hit the like button to show your support. Feed the algorithm. You know the drill. Feed me.
I'm starving! Must be blood. Must be fresh. And if you think we've earned it, get subscribed as well. As always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Drop your comments in the thoughts. Nope, that's not right. <laughs> yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.